Can you hear me now? Good evening. Thank you all for coming. Um, let, looks like everybody in the lobby has made it into this room. But uh, to start with, my name is Miranda Redinger. I'm a senior planner with the city. Some of you may recognize me from working on the sub area planning uh, four years. Who was who participated in that? Uh, we're going to see some station citizen committee members. Um, and so I'm going to start off the presentation tonight, and then uh, Nora Dele Peng, who is the project manager for the corridor strategy, that is the primary purpose of this meeting, is going to take you through a bunch of information. And we're going to go back to the lobby and look at the boards and fill out some uh, worksheets and, and get your opinions. And so first, I'm going to give you an overview, uh, including a summary of the outreach events that happened in the fall. How many of you? came to uh, workshops or walk tour, bike tour uh, in October. Okay, so I not a, not a lot, so I'll, I'll hit the summary notes a little, <laughs> uh, I'll spend a little more time there, um, just so everybody can come up to speed. We're gonna talk tonight about the draft roadway options that came out of that fall outreach process. We're gonna talk about the gathering place ideas that were also something that came out of that process. We are going to get feedback um, from all of you. We're going to do a quick Q&A after this session. Um, and how we're going to do that is uh, if you would like an index card, a comment card, we've got some uh, consultant staff here that has things. We're going to write down questions that you have during the presentation. At the end of the presentation, you're going to hand those to Christine Edens, who is, she will be back. <laughs> um, but at the end of the presentation, hand those cards to her, and she'll pick some questions, and then we'll have a little Q&A. Um, and then we're going to get everybody back into the lobby to look at boards and fill out um, some other stuff. So first of all, I want to talk about the goal, which is to create a vision that is future-focused for all users. Oh, Christine, wave your hand. So when you have your questions on your cards, Christine will be collecting them for you at the end of the meeting. So um, as you think about questions during the presentation, write them down, we'll get to them. Um, but let's first talk about what this is. So the title is a multimodal corridor strategy. And each of those words have a specific meaning. Multimodal means it's good for all users. So what we're talking about here is coming up with roadway design that works for cars, transit, bikes, pedestrians, all ages and abilities. Corridor is pictured here. So one of the things that came out of the subway planning work was to identify this kind of Z-shaped uh, blue stripe here as the primary corridor that would connect Aurora and the businesses there and the light rail station and then go up to the North City Business District. So we're going to focus tonight on 185th, 10th, and 180th. And then strategy means that we're not just going to come up with a plan. We also really need to figure out how this plan is going to come to life and be implemented. So here's the schedule. We started off um, with outreach events in October. And then we took the feedback from those events and we developed the corridor options that you're going to see tonight, both in this presentation and then on the boards in the lobby. And we developed evaluation criteria uh, to kind of compare those different options against each other and figure out um, not only which options people prefer, but which elements of those options lead people to prefer that option. So now we're here at the spring events. And again, we're, we're talking about the cross sections uh, that are different options. and why people like them or don't. We're going to take the information from this meeting and a number of other stakeholder meetings, uh, a number of other conversations we're having with neighborhood associations and transit providers and a lot of other folks, and we're going to refine that concept into one preferred concept. It could be a hybrid. It doesn't have to be exactly one of the options out there, uh, which is why we want to know which pieces of the options you like, and we're going to have We'll come back to council probably July 15th, and they're going to select their preferred design options. And then 
here's where that strategy word comes into play. We have to figure out how to get the road built, ideally before the trains start running in 2024. So um, one of the things to be really clear about is that this is not a project like Aurora, where we had <laughs> tens of millions of federal and state dollars, uh, and we did it in a mile chunk, and then a mile chunk, and then a mile chunk. The reason that we need to figure out what the cross section is going to be is so as development comes in now, you'll notice some townhomes coming up along 185th, um, we need them to be able to start building the right cross section. Sound Transit's gonna build some of the cross section, and then we need to figure out where to get money uh, to fill in the blanks. So for those of you, uh, oh wait, quickly. <laughs> I would also point out that a lot of the, the work that you're gonna see tonight did come out of the subway planning work that happened between 2013 and 2015 for this station sub area. A lot of it also is implementing a lot of other master planning work that we have done in the past. The transportation master plan, and what should happen with bicycles, um, it, the, the comprehensive plan, which is an overarching guiding document for the city over a 20 year period, uh, the climate action plan, surface water master plan, the parks master plan, pretty much every master plan that we've done, because this is the area where the change is happening, we want to be able to implement all of the good goals that we developed through those other plans. Now, for those of you who were who recall the 185th process, we selected one concept because we needed to do things like traffic modeling and analysis. Um, so we came up with this concept. This was never intended to be a final design. When you're doing roadway planning, it's important to pick multiple options, compare them against each other, do a very thorough analysis, and then select the one that's going to work. And then you put that, uh, you make it official, and then people can start to build it, and the city can start to apply for grant money for capital projects. But this was the concept from the summary plan. And it did accommodate all users. And it started with the existing 42-foot curb to curb. The reason it did that was because we heard a lot of folks say that they would like to preserve as many mature, healthy trees as possible. So we didn't move the curb lines. One of the options tonight also doesn't move the curb lines. Two of them do. So in creating distinction areas, distinct scenarios, that's one of the things that we thought about. But this one didn't move the curbs, but as you can see, the existing right-of-way is 60 feet. And the um, this Imagine cross-section adds up to a total of 76 feet, which is eight foot on each side, bigger than the current right-of-way. So because of that, every time a developer comes in, we have them dedicate eight feet to the city. So we use that as the minimum bookend of the design options that we considered that are the options in the lobby. The other thing um, was that when the summary plan was adopted, we created setbacks, which are the distance that a building must be from the property line at 15 feet. So that nobody, until we figured out what the actual cross-section design was, would build into that space. So that is the high bookend for as wide as road options as we considered. So the designs you're gonna see are between 76 feet and 90 feet, because that's the area uh, which we already have dedicated space but beyond which, if you got wider than that, you may be cutting into buildings that were recently constructed. So those are the bookends that we used for that. And real quickly, for those of you, I, I know I mentioned this, but um, for those of you who saw this picture four years ago and said, when, when's the city writing me my check for the 10 feet of my property? Uh, that's still not happening yet. <laughs> First step, figure out the cross section. Second step, figure out how to make it happen. So fall outreach events, we had walk tours and bike tours and stakeholder meetings and drop-in houses and an open house and an FAQ and website updates and an online survey. There's a project website for this and we do have the outreach report if you guys are interested in the specific details of that. But some of the things, uh, first of all, we heard from a lot of folks, close to 200, about half of them in person, about half of them in an online survey. We also ask people what modes they use to travel around the corridor now versus what they would prefer to in the future, assuming they felt safe doing so. So uh, it looks like, uh, not with huge margins, but there was definitely 
a desire for folks to want to walk and bike and use transit more and drive less. And some of the themes we heard were, we'd like to see increased amenities, enhanced pedestrian safety and experience, improve bike safety and connections, assess existing trees for preservation, enhance existing and add new green spaces, minimize impacts to adjacent properties, reduce traffic congestion, consider on-street parking, and now I'm gonna hand it over to Nora, who's gonna walk you through all the design options. Like I said, write down your questions, we'll answer them at the end. Good evening, thank you so much for being here. My name's Nora Daly Penny, and I am a senior transportation planner here with the city of Shoreline. And um, I'm going to go through the options um, that are really out in the lobby. So this is a way of uh, orienting to all the good information that's out there. So, um, you'll notice that Z configuration that Miranda talked about. We're really talking about three streets, 185th, 10th, and 180th. And, oops, wrong one. Uh, first thing I want to take care of is there's two segments that we don't have options for, and I want to explain why. So, segment A, on 185th, that's from Fremont all the way to Midvale Avenue. The existing roadway configuration is what we need today and tomorrow to move cars and um, necessitate the turning movements on and off Aurora. So we don't have any proposed roadway changes for that segment. Um, we do, out in the lobby, we have um, a concept for reinvigorating the space behind um, Spiros. I just received a beautiful mural and talks about what we can do on the ground to complement that. But going to the next one that we're not going to show any options for is C. So segment C is um, east of I-5. Um, oh, sorry, it's actually straddles I-5. So it's from 2nd Avenue, which is west of I-5, and then all the way to 8th Avenue. It's essentially the segment that Sound Transit is rechannelizing to prepare for the opening of light rail, to move people to and from the light rail station. And we are assuming that we will keep those improvements in place. Therefore, we're not proposing any um, other roadway options. So that leaves us with B, which is on 185th, and that is from Midvale all the way to 2nd. Um, and we have three options out on the floor, and I'm going to go through those. Um, and then there's, on 10th Avenue, which I have labeled here as D, um, we have three options for that roadway. And then on 180, which brings you all the way up to 15th in the North City Business District, we have two options. So, um, going back to goals and objectives. Our team developed a set of evaluation criteria so that we could compare and contrast the options. And that was based on um, their value-based criteria and they're speaking to how well it performs for pedestrians, for cyclists, for transit, for drivers, for what we call livability, the quality of life elements, and for cost. And so you'll see that out on the boards, how we've um, gone through each option and systematically scored those from low to high using um, a really simple color key, um, color spectrum. And now just a little orientation to the boards that are out there that are speaking to these roadway options. You will see in the um, top corner, there's a little locator map. So that helps you see what street and what part of the street we're talking about for an option. <clears throat> and there's a cross section. A cross section is like if you slice a piece of cake and you get to see all the layers and fruit and, and frosting that's um, throughout it. So the cross section is just a typical cross section. It's supposed to be representing uh, the components that you would see, and then we developed what we call a drop-down plan. So it's a plan view of that cross-section, as if you were looking down at that cake, 
Um, and it's uh, just assembling all of those components into a plan and labeling them. So you can have a feeling of what this option is offering. Um, we've also built in these little insects to talk about how we handle transit stops at this option, how we handle stormwater at this option. And then the last piece is that evaluation criteria table that's scored with the colors. So each option has one of those boards, and then we take this kind of, I call this the compilation um, option. It takes the, the options for that street and puts them all together. It shows up top. What's out there today? This is the existing cross section. And then here, in this case, there were three options to look at. And right next to them, it shows how they score. So you can see this all at a glance. Now I'd like to just walk us through the options really um, at a high level. And first, um, starting with 185th, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the existing conditions. So Moran did a really nice job setting me up on talking about the geometry that's out there today. Today we have about 42 feet curve to curve. You know that we have um, lanes in each direction in the center turn lane. The um, right of way is 60 feet and then as Miranda was saying, through those eight foot dedications, we have 76 feet. And with the building setbacks, we have up to a, a 90 foot um, window of opportunity to develop what we're calling kind of bookend options. So when you go back out to the lobby, you'll see one of these options explores what you can do within 76 feet. And the other two options look at what we can do with just under 90 feet of right of way. Also wanted to um, just quickly point out um, on 185th, we have a zoning on both sides of the street is called MUR, mixed use residential, um, 45 feet. So street elements, um, we put together this visual toolbox to start to show you images of the words that we're using um, for these options. And our intention in developing the options was to develop a, a distinct set of options so that not one option is the end all be all, but rather we've created these really distinct options so you can compare and contrast them. And hopefully tonight you'll tell us what you like. Um, and I'm gonna just jump ahead just really quickly. I'll spend a little more time talking about this, but we have a worksheet that's gonna step you through all the options and it'll be a great way for you to tell us what you like and why. So this visual toolbox, um, starts to talk about the distinctions and the options. When you go out there, you'll see options have different bike facilities, from bike lanes to protected bike lanes to shared use paths. What do we mean by that? You'll look at photos and you can, okay, I understand. We have a common understanding of what that word means. Um, what are the treatments at, tr at transit stops? Um, we have an innovative concept that we're calling flex zones, and flex zones are additional space in the a sidewalk realm that can be used um, a variety of ways. It can be used for street furniture, like a street cafe, or bike parking. It could be used for additional planting, stormwater management, a transit stop. Um, and so this is going to be a really helpful guide. Um, I wanted to just quickly talk about some of the ways that we've shown contrasting options. So out there you'll see we have an option that preserves existing curves so that we can look at um, preserving healthy existing trees where they exist. You'll also see other options where new trees are planted. There's options that include on-street parking and then there's options that don't. 
There's options with multiple lane configurations. There's options with dedicated bus lanes and not. There's options to underground utilities and there's options to keep them above ground. So that's part of the variety um, that we're offering tonight. There's not going to be one option at this point that satisfies probably you or anyone, but the idea is we need to hear what resonates with you so that we can develop that hybrid option. Okay, so I'm gonna keep moving. Um, just going through really quickly, for 185th, we have three options. One of them is a three-lane configuration with bike lanes. Another one is a four-lane configuration that includes dedicated bus lanes and a, protected, um, a set of protected bike lanes. And then there is an option that has five lanes. That's two in each direction with a center turn lane and a shared use path on the north side. Now turning the corner, we're on 10th Avenue. Just quickly on the existing conditions, as you know, there's a lane in each direction. The right of way is 80 feet wide. Um, right now there's um, unpaved shoulders. And the zoning is um, asymmetrical. So on the west side, it is MUR 70 foot height. And on the east side, it's MUR um, 45 foot height. And our concepts responded to this um, zoning asymmetry. And so we developed three options for 10th Avenue. Uh, one has a two lane section with buffered bike lanes. Another one has a two lane section with bike lanes and on street parking. And the last one is a three lane section um, with bike lanes. Now turning the corner, on, oh, we're on 180th now, heading up to 15th, North City Business District. And looking at the existing conditions, it's a 60 foot right of way. There's a lane of traffic in each direction. Um, the zoning again is asymmetrical on, depending on what side of the street you're on. On the north side, it's MUR 35. And on the south side, it varies really block to block. So the, it could be MUR uh, 35, MUR 45, or commercial business. And we have zoning map handouts if anyone really wants to get into those details. We developed two options for this street. One looks at a two-lane um, section with bike lanes. The other one is a two-lane section with buffer bike lanes and on-street parking. Okay, the last piece that's out there that I want to explain is community gathering places. Um, shoreline's growing, and people need more outdoor space to enjoy life. And so we have, the team has developed, identified four sites along the corridor as enhanced open spaces. And I wanted just to walk through, again, this is like an orientation to the board, so this is just a sample. We have a key lo locator map in the top corner to show you where you are in the corner. There's um, the orange lines on each one of these diagrams shows um, areas where we believe they need to be connected. Um, the overall plan with images are really about program ideas. We're not designing these spaces right now. We're really trying to um, develop a set of appropriate activities that could help nurture a sense of place, um, develop or increase um, just the, the opportunities of things that you can do outside right from your home. Um, we have aerial photos on each map that are existing photos just for reference. And then we've identified opportunities and listed them and also constraints for each one of these sites. <coughs> um, now I'll just kind of quickly walk through what are these sites all about? Where did they come from? So site number one is um, on 185th and Aurora intersection behind Spiros. Um, it just received a new mural that you might have noticed. And this site is a city-owned site 
um, that was identified in the Shoreline Arts Plan as a collection of themed art spaces along Aurora. Um, and some of the ideas, sorry, I got ahead of myself, some of the ideas that we've um, developed for this site, and we want to hear from you, is what if um, the ground, the foreground of this site could um, have plants that complement this beautiful new mural? What if um, people that are waiting for the bus could make music or um, do a quick workout with fitness zone equipment? Um, what if there was bike parking so that people could make that first or last mile connection between their home and the transit stop? Um, site number two is on the south side of 185th between Stoneway and, I mean, Stone Ave and Ashworth. And it is a site that was identified during the station sub area planning process as a potential for a nature um, enhanced space. And some of the ideas that we have here is what if the, the frontage of this site could be activated with educational place making elements? And what if um, this nature enhanced area had a loop trail or a boardwalk around it? Site number three is at the intersection of Fifth Avenue and 185th. Um, Sound Transit is gonna be realigning 185th and building five blocks from 180th to 185th of what we're calling a trail along the rail. That's a um, shared use path as a way to create better um, pedestrian and bicycle connections to and from the future station. And um, some of the ideas for this, um, for this site is, what if this site became a trailhead um, and had wayfinding elements, places to meet, places to recharge, um, place-making elements? And lastly, um, site number four, is called Rotary Park. And this site was developed, in, uh, identified in the Shoreline Parks Plan, Parks and Parks Recreation Open Space Plan. It's short, it goes by Pro's Plan for short. Um, and some of the elements for this, so this site is a collection of both um, properties and utility corridors. Seattle City Lights power lines run through this site. And, sorry, getting ahead of myself. Um, some of the ideas, what if this site offers something for everyone? What if this was a place that you could go to garden and community garden, a place to watch a movie, to hear a concert, a place to splash around and play? So just some ideas and we want to hear yours too. Um, now quickly, I'm just going to finish off my um, orientation of what's out there tonight. Um, the balloons are gonna help you. So um, all of you, if, if you've um, checked in at the welcome, that's the green balloons. If you haven't, please um, just spend time tonight just putting, you know, signing in. Um, that would be great. We really like to count everyone. Um, the middle of the room, the yellow balloons, that's where the worksheets are going to be. They're going to be asking questions about the roadway options and also the community gathering spaces that I was just talking about. And the, for those that brought some kiddos tonight, we have a coloring station um, where there's purple balloons. And so, um, again, thank you for being here. I just talked about this signing in. If you could put a dot where you live, we'd like to know which neighborhoods are attending these meetings. Um, review the boards. We have we have 11 or 12 staff people here to talk with you about them, and then please fill out the worksheet. Now I'm going to talk about put in a plug for the worksheet. Um, it's four pages. It's really visual. It um, it walks you back through all of those options that are on the boards, and it asks you just to tell us what your favorite is and why. Um, and then the um, Last page really talks about those community gathering spaces. There's lists, a menu of all those ideas that are represented as little pictures on those boards. And it's just asking you, do any of these resonate with you? 
Do you have another idea? Write it in. Thanks. Already plugged the kids activity, design a street, um, and then just ways to stay engaged. So we um, really do try to keep the website up to date. We're filming this tonight, so if you know any neighbors or friends that couldn't be here, they can watch this all. Um, we are going to launch an online survey starting um, Friday, and um, April 5th, and run it all the way until May 28th. Um, and it is going to uh, mirror the activities that you're doing tonight. Um, and then if, if anyone's feeling uh, media social, we have a hashtag, so um, feel free to use it. And with that, thank you for your attention. Um, Miranda and I are here to answer any cards. Christine is going to, she's already sorted them. Um, she's gonna start asking questions. Okay, just a reminder, Brett has extra cards. If you do have a question, he can come around and pass you a card for you to write down while we start answering questions. And Adam has some also over here. So just raise your hand. And then as you have one that's complete, just hold it up a little bit so we can see your white flag. And we'll come around and, and grab it from you and I'll add it to my pile. So Nora and Miranda, the first question here is, what is the timeline for implementation? Be good to clarify that. Is there funding for this, these concepts? And is there a priority among the A, B, C, essentially phasing? Are we gonna start in one place or another? So those are great questions. Um, and they're really the questions that we as a team need to, we have been asking, we have to continue to ask, is the strategy, we need to be strategic about this. We don't have any capital funding right now to build any of these improvements, and yet our, our um, development permit applications come in every day, and we're making decisions about what type of frontage improvements and where that curb line's going to be. So when we have a gelled um, concept plan for these three streets, we're gonna be more definitive about um, basically getting all those puzzle pieces together because then we can be telling our developers where to, to put that curve. Um, and then your last question was about are you going to be phasing it? Are you going to be marching down the road? Um, we really haven't got there yet, but um, one of the things that's really looming in my mind is that the light rail station is opening in 2024. And there's going to be roadway improvements that are going to be happening, as I mentioned, on 5th. There's also going to be roadway improvements that are happening on 185th that this project could really leverage um, when we have a master plan for this. Did you want to add anything? Uh, next question. Does the city own the property for the community gathering spaces? So two out of the sites we do, they're city-owned parcels. Um, Rotary Park is a collection of um, um, utility right-of-ways, Seattle City Light and also Seattle Public Utilities, and private um, properties we, that we do not own as a city. But we have um, put out offer letters to uh, willing sellers, and we have not heard anything at this moment. Um, the site that I talked about between Ashworth and Stone, similar, is private property. The city has um, sent out an offer letter. Okay, great. This is about our Z configuration. So why Northeast 180th? Why don't we just route traffic to 175th? And I'm going to do my best to try to roll some of these together. I'm getting some common questions, just fair one. So this goes back to the, the station area's um, planning. Actually, this Z configuration was developed through um, community workshops, and the whole intent was to uh, unite, connect North City with um, this new great transit hub that's coming, and also the, uh, the Aurora Corridor. So there's kind of like the, the two um, Barbells, I guess you would say, those commercial districts, and then at the center, the transit hub, and strengthening those together, um, 
And so the question was, why not just bring it down to 175th? I think that good community workshop um, work really set those streets in place, and then just to really reinforce it, um, we have King County Metro that is in their long-range plan. They're also um, looking to provide bus service on that Z. Miranda and Nora, these may have been considered during the summary planning process, I'm not sure, but what speed limit changes are we considering on 185th with these scenarios and or is zone parking and neighborhood zone parking considered for the corridor? Um, so no speed limit changes right now um, for any of this. And then in terms of um, zone parking, I will say something, and then if you know anything additional, but um, you know, I'm just going to pass it over to you. Talk about like <laughs> that, you tell. So this is one of the things that we did talk about because with zoning, you know, we didn't get so into speed limit. That's more of a traffic engineering thing that will be an end product here. There may be a recommendation to change the speed limit, or that would be strategy implementation. Um, but in terms of residential parking zones, or RPZs, as they are commonly abbreviated, um, that's something that we have both um, as Sound Transit, as the light rails open and we're going to neighbor or we're going to monitor parking in the neighborhood. It's commonly called hide and ride. Um, and obviously, there are a lot of folks that were concerned about that. So we will monitor that over time if we need to institute RPZs. Um, we have an agreement with Sound Transit to consider that. We also commonly consider RPZs with large um, large developments. Uh, it's usually something that is integrated into what we call a parking management plan, and that's to say if your building causes spillover parking, then you're going to have to <laughs> pay into a program whereby we you know, permit um, and enforce parking regulations. So it's not something that we're implementing immediately. It's something we're going to monitor over time. We've got mechanisms in place if we need to institute that. Okay, great. This is about zoning and, and the subway planning. Are there currently plans that require mixed use development along 185th or this corridor? So, right now, uh, the mixed use isn't required, um, but all of the zones are called mixed use residential. And, you know, there's more common types um, that are developed, but there's a fair amount of flexibility in the zoning. And so right now, somebody along 185th could convert a single family house into a yoga studio or a restaurant or an accountant's business. They could build a four story building with retail on the ground floor, departments above. They could build just a straight office or they could build townhomes. So it's not a requirement, but there's a fair amount of flexibility and all of the zones are titled mixed use. Okay, these are about uh, community engagement. So police and fire, how much are they included in this planning process, and how is the conversation going with our transit partners, King County Metro, Community Transit, I know it's here, and do they feel they have a need for that dedicated bus lane? Great question. So um, we um, have a pretty deep um, stakeholder and great engagement process. So in the fall, we met with um, a lot of stakeholders and we are continuing we're, we're doubling down for spring so we met with our transit providers um, King County Metro and community transit and we shared early drafts of these options um, just to get their feedback from an operator standpoint if they would work and they talked to us about their ideas about providing frequent service along the corridor to and from the station and what they would need in order to um, what they call speed and reliability. So if you're at the bus stop and you're waiting for your, your bus, um, the likelihood of it coming has a lot to do with how well the traffic's flowing and if that bus has to share a lane with other vehicles where they get a dedicated lane. Um, and so we got some really great feedback, and that is why that's one of those distinctions I was trying to make, is that not all the options have dedicated bus lanes, but one of them does. Um, and then back to your question, 
Has fire and police been involved? Yes. We've um, provided them the full staff report with all the materials that are out there today. Um, I have a doodle poll that I have to look at tomorrow morning to pin down a date to meet with um, fire, police, and utility providers. We're going to have a second meeting with our transit providers, um, as well as um, property, large property owners along the corridor, businesses, um, Anyone else? developers. We're going to be meeting with developers. Um, and I, uh, youth, and I am um, working on going to uh, neighborhood association meetings. I have three set up right now, and if anybody from a neighborhood association wants Miranda and I to come, we would love it. Okay, great. Uh, besides the strategy, is the city considering other design requirements and asking that of builders for consistent curb appeal and street design? Some of you may have noticed a flyer on the sign-in table that says, do you have opinions about townhouse design? Share them with us. So one of the projects that uh, is, is happening now, uh, and the flyer gives you a link to a survey, so it's just starting, but we're looking very closely at our townhouse design standards. Previously, we did not have zoning that allowed this building type, and so our design standards were more geared to small apartment buildings. But this process will look specifically at townhouse design standards. Uh, there will be a schedule on the web page where you can see when this is going to be coming before the commission or the council, but in the meantime, um, go and, and check out that survey and, and tell the planning department which styles you like and which you don't. Okay. Trying to combine a couple here. Uh, public Space D specifically has power lines. Is there any plan to underground those power lines over that public space? And in terms of safety in those public spaces, how are we going to ensure safety in neighborhoods with these new public spaces, potentially with the concern of uh, people who are currently experiencing homelessness? So public space D, I think, is site four, Rotary Park. And the question was about, would we be doing um, underground power for that site? Um, that was, you know, that's actually a section of the street that I was kind of going through the ones that we didn't develop options. We don't have a roadway cross section for that piece of uh, 185th and 10th. Um, but that is something we are totally, we're in a great place right now in um, this process to consider anything at all. So if that's going to provide more open space, and I'm going to segue right into how to keep spaces safe. Um, it's called SEPTED, Crime um, Prevention Through Environmental Design, and keeping things open, light, and bright, and give, not giving places for um, people to hide is a very effective way to reduce crime. So if any of these ideas take hold, and there's funding, and there's will to do it, um, we work really closely with our police department, um, they give us SEPTED reviews on design. Um, it's all about surveillance. Okay, this is a bit about traffic impact. Uh, so choices made on 185th will change traffic on 175th. How are we going to balance that impact between 175th and the 185th corridor? And then related, but will any Point Wells development in the future affect planning for traffic on 185th? So I am not the city's traffic engineer. Um, those are really technical questions. Um, I would, I guess I would, does, I don't know, does Angela, our traffic engineer consultant, want to answer the one about um, things that we do on 185th, um, if they would affect 175th? So I'll just I'll just um, summarize. You know, we we're smart about um, basically we don't look at things in isolation. This is what Angela is trying to tell me here, and I know this, right? We look at things in context. 
Um, we're, um, we have run actually traffic projections for our Z configuration. We understand how it will perform if it receives no improvements. And it actually, it, it looks pretty um, bleak. If we don't do some improvements to this quarter um, to anticipate, I mean, traffic's just gonna continue to grow. We need to make smart improvements. And the variety, again, to the distinct options, some options are going to help traffic flow better. I guess the other piece of it is comparing, kind of looking at how things shift, right, between 175th and 185th. Station is opening, the light rail station is opening in 2024. Um, people are, are and living and are going to be living on the corridor, and if that's their destination, or if the light rail station is their destination, they'll still use 185th. Um, and so I guess, you know, through traffic modeling, we create these predictive models and we put in these things about or origin and destination and number of lanes and flows during peak times and off peak times. And we share that all back with you and we share it all back with council. Uh, where can someone read about planned developments that are happening right now or in that permit process? Sure. So the planning department page has a permit search tool. If you have a question about a specific property or a specific development, periodically, the planning director and sometimes the economic development director will make a report to council, to the chamber of commerce, to neighborhood associations. I know. The, I think the most recent one was probably at the council of neighborhoods, where they will go through and say, "Here's the number of permit applications. Here's you know what kind of development we're seeing." I'm not aware that there's just sort of a place that you